want. So we gotta think what it would be individual like and to what that actually meant. What it was was a structure that was pretty much created, the ego structure was created out of uh, what Julian James calls the bicameral mind becoming one mind. And apparently, according to him, he said that back in the old days of the, the Greeks, on the earliest writing in the world, people didn't have self consciousness in the same way that we have. They didn't have egos. They didn't understand themselves as I in the same way we did because the corpus colossal that connects the two hemispheres of the brain wasn't connected. So if you had a voice, that voice was God. And Homer and all those guys have been plenty of examples of people hearing the voice of God. And I turned that Alexander constantly acted in the voice of God. Julian James suggests that it wasn't the voice of God, it was the voice of the left hemisphere of the brain communicating with the right hemisphere of the brain, interpreted as a God. So okay, now we've got the two things joined together with this beautiful bridge in the middle, links the two. But we still have the ego structure, which was then created when those things linked, because suddenly we're like, oh fuck, I am I, I am the I am. This is my God, my God is this, I am separate, I am one. We need this idea that we're somehow separate from nature. Oh my gosh, <laughs> what's happened? I'm like, I made new scientists last month, right? He said something, like they're talking about nature, we must control nature, we must do this. How do we deal with our relationship with nature? We are fucking nature. There's nothing on this planet that is not nature. Power stations are nature. Tell me the atom bombs are nature because nature made us to make those things. Why do you trust nature or you don't trust nature? I trust nature. Okay. <laughs> so we have to see what is nature getting out here. If we ignore this crap that we're sort of isolated from nature, that we still have to tame nature, of course nature knows exactly what it's doing. The planet is not in danger, we are. The planet will survive, the planet's been through like ammonia atmospheres and impossible combat and everything dead, and it gets its way back out of it. We're in danger. Or so we think, because our hubris tells us that we are in danger, our hubris tells us that we're about to destroy the world, we're going to wreck the planet, we'll fuck the atmosphere. No, we'll fuck the other atmosphere. You know, some child makes a comment that you live in anything we create. So that is not the problem. The problem is, we're starting in the 21st century stuck with individuality because we believed in it so much. It seems so important that we should all be distinct. What happens if we stop being distinct? And what happens if we think of individuality as something that was actually just scaffolding from where we are now? So if you create a skyscraper, you put up your scaffolding, you build the building. And what's happened here is that we've overlooked the building and focused on the scaffolding. You know, why are we taking the scaffolding down? Let's do it today, take the scaffolding down. Because the individual is a way to get us to this point. And what I really think, and basically why I'm here is to try and punt this measure. for six years, after thinking about this stuff for six years, after proving that it works for six years, I'm left with this notion. We've been fooled. <laughs> we took it to the fifth dimension. <laughs> when the fifth dimension is outside space and time, and it's like what time is all about. The universe we live in is designed to grow larvae. Sui nostri pianeti. La forma che voi chiamate uomo si è sviluppata ed è progredita intellettualmente e socialmente, passando attraverso vari stadi di evoluzione sino ad un punto che apparirebbe per voi inconcepibile. 